What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today, oh my God, today, bro. As you guys just saw against Duriel, Heartseeker is back. Okay, the build is back. It's way different, but even stronger than what it was. So first and foremost, I got to give a huge shout out to Deoxide uh, for him and his collaboration with some of the other Rogue mains to really put this build together. I was last night, I was talking to him in his stream and I was asking him a lot of questions about this build because I could not believe my eyes seeing Heartseeker back. So today we're going to go over everything, the skills, the gear, the Paragon, all the item changes that you can make and exactly how this build works because it's way different than it was in season four. Again, big shout out to the Oxide. I'll link his channel and all his socials down in the description below. So make sure to go follow his channel, man. He's a great rogue master. Okay, so let's get into this. Heartseeker is back, guys. So it's changed a lot. Heartseeker's here. It is by far one of the best builds for Rogue. It's insane. It hits for over a billion damage um, on the explosions. So let's break everything down. First, let's go ahead and go into the skill tree just to show how this works. Again, real quick, as you even saw in the video, like my gear isn't even leveled up super crazy. So uh, we got to get there. We got, we got a ways to go here. But for now, it's still pretty solid. So uh, here we go. Going into the gear. Heartseeker, obviously, this is a basic attack build. We're not doing anything else. We got as many ranks into Heartseeker as possible. Into primary Heartseeker, so this ricochets and dealing 75% of its original damage. This is going to help you when you're farming, like, your Nightmare Dungeons, your, your T8s, or your T7 um, Infernal Hordes, because it can absolutely blast. So, uh, just primary is way better than the fundamental, because you don't need the additional critical strike damage. So, uh, boom, there we go. All right, next we're coming down. I maxed out Sturdy here. I really like Sturdy because rogues are fragile, man. You know, they're they're super fragile. They take a lot of damage. Um, so without a high dodge chance, you want to have as much damage reduction as you can. One point in the siphoning strikes on a lucky hit are crits against close enemies because we are in close proximity. We're not as ranged as we want to be, and I'll explain when we get to the key passive, but we want siphoning strike just for a little bit of, um, um, you know, health regen. Then we're coming down, we're doing Shadow Step into the Discipline, so that way we can get a better cooldown. This is our only form of Unstoppable. Okay, this is our only form. This is the way we get out of, like, a CC effect or stuck or whatever it is. This is the only form, so we have to have this. We max out Weapon Master for even more damage because we are using a bow. Um, a bow, I think, is better in this one. Bow or crossbow, it does not matter. The damage is pretty close, but I like bows better. That's just personal preference. Then we got Caltrops again into Methodical Caltrops. They deal cold damage and chill. We are all cold and bew in this build, which is pretty awesome. Now, I know that the Caltrops don't scale like they used to from last season, but it still adds a nice damage boost as well as the, the slow amount, which is going to allow us to chill our enemies, particularly the bosses, so we can apply more damage. Next, we have Unstable Elixirs. My gosh, this is just insane, man. Um... The increase in damage here, 36 multiplicative percent increased damage is insane here for rogues. I love this change. Next, we also got trick attacks for dazing or stunning an enemy. Increases your crit strike chance and damage against both of them. Very, very good. Then we got dash into methodical dash, so that way we can dash more often, and its cooldown is reduced. This is important. We need as many charges on dash as we can because it's going to apply to our, um, our key passive. Then we come down. Of course, we got dark shroud into enhance and subverting so we heal for 10 percent when uh, uh, a dark shroud is removed from us because we are up close so even though we're going to gain a lot of dark shrouds and we should always be at five we are going to lose some so being able to heal like that is kind of nice now if you don't think you need the additional healing then just do uh countering this is fine while you have at least one active you gain a bigger crit strike chance either one is okay i think with the siphoning strikes and how fast you attack you could probably go countering so it's fine uh, then we got Smoke Grenade into Countering Smoke Grenade. Hitting a, a boss or elite reduces the cooldown of Smoke Grenade by five seconds. Really, though, you could um, you could do Subverting, but you don't need it. We want to have Smoke Grenade up as much as we can because, and it one, it dazes, enemy, which dazes enemies, which triggers our trick attacks. And then, two, uh, we do increased damage against those for 6.6 .6 seconds. Very, very good. Uh, then we max out um, Exploit as well as Malice. Now, I have extra ranks here because of my Amulet for Exploit, which is perfectly fine. However, we want Malice as much as possible because we do even more damages 
even more damages. Even more damage, especially when they're knocked down, which is very important. Then I took my final two points into Agile. That way we can get some uh, increased dodge chance. I really love this uh, passive skill for the Rogue. However, these are a free two points. You can put these wherever you want. I like them there. It's totally fine. You can max out Siphoning Strikes. You could add them into Sutter Step when you're doing your speed farming. Um, you could put them anywhere you want. You could even add more for Alchemist's Fortune for even more lucky hit chance. If you want, that is totally fine. You could max this. I just like Agile. It's great. Uh, next, we're doing Cold Imbuement, okay? Cold Imbuement all the way down to Mixed Cold Imbuement. So our Cold Imbuement skills are going to deal more increased damage against frozen enemies and have a chance to make them vulnerable. But you can see that it's not on the bar. I'll explain that once we get to the gear. Uh, and then, of course, we max out Frigid Finesse. This is a huge, huge, huge damage boost here for this build. Um, then we come down, and I have Death Trap. It's just one on here. This really just helps us round out the build. Um, those extra two free points can also go into Prime Death and Supreme Death. Um, if you want to max this out for just, you know, some higher level content, especially like Matt, putting the two points here is actually really, really good against um, like the Infernal Hordes. So that's really nice. And then we got Intervention. We got a big rank into Intervention here for a chance to gain back energy. This is going to allow us to spam. We got uh, as many points as we can into Second Wind. Every 100 energy that is spent, uh, we gain 60% of our life as a barrier. And you're like, wait a second. War, how are you spending you know your resource with a base skill i'll explain once we get to the gear pieces because it can be a little confusing then we got one point in the fortune like i said for the lucky hit now the one of the biggest changes here last season in season four we had heart seeker victimized which was fantastic the explosion was insane however this was from what the dev said bugged and it was double dipping so victimizes damage was increased by 120 percent of our vulnerable that 120 percent last season was actually 240 percent which is why the build was so insane now they they put it back to 120 and then they increased the explosion size of victimize itself however this basically just led the build to be dead essentially it just wasn't as good a 50 percent explosion radius just wasn't good enough i really wish they just would have left it at 240 or maybe met in the middle and just changed the 120 to like 180 and it would would have felt more balanced so because of those reasons we moved away from victimize and now we're in close quarters combat so damaging a close enemy with marksman or cutthroat each give us 15 percent of bonus attack speed so when you hit with a marksman and a cutthroat that's 30 percent increased attack speed while both attack speed bonuses are active you deal uh increased damage equal to 10 percent of your multiplicative of your damage versus crowd control which right now it's 24 percent so this is why we have as many ranks on dash as possible because what we're going to do is this is our cutthroat skill and then heart seeker is our marksman skill so when we're up close we're popping these so that way we can keep the um increased attack speed here and increased damage with close quarters now our skill specialization of choice last season we used inner sight because when it filled up we get an increased critical strike chance however you can still use this this is still a very strong option it is okay to use inner sight um, we have moved to preparation after spending 75 energy to reduce your ultimate skills cooldown by five seconds ultimate skills would re reset your other cooldowns and grant 15 percent damage reduction this is really nice because again like i said rogues are are fragile so the 15 percent damage reduction is huge and then when we pop this it resets all of our other skills mainly our caltrops and smoke grenade so you can use preparation it feels really good but inner sight is just fine if you want that additional um critical strike chance which would be really good for the build it's totally fine not a big deal so either one i i'm i, I tested inner sight on the dummies and then you just saw me kill durial with uh preparation so either one is fine totally up to you now let's get into the gear because this is going to be a kind of a confusing section here um but let's get into it so we are rocking cowl of the nameless all right cowl of the nameless here i know i know it's not shako i know it's not uh uh, on Darius, I know, I know, I know. However, I think this is really, really cool, man. We actually have a build that can use this uh, this helmet. Uh, so we get a bunch of ranks into unstable elixirs, which gives us that in crazy increased damage and trick attacks, rapid gambits, and crowd control duration, which is fantastic. But more importantly, we gain 30% multiplicative, increased lucky hit chance against uh, crowd control enemies. So when you see this 60% here, that's not factored in. Okay, we haven't gotten that extra... Um, lucky hit chance here so lucky heart seeker will be much higher now you're like well why do we need a high lucky hit chance 
So when we get to the gloves, we'll explain. Of course, we got Tyrael's Might here for more DR. And then, of course, the um, Divine Barrage and to help max our um, uh, resistances. Very, very good. Now, let's get into our gloves, Pangorgers. This is where the build thrives, okay? So before Victimize was our big explosion and Victimize was what was dealing all of our damage, right? Now we've moved away from that and Pangorgers is going to take that explosion slot. So not only do we get a bunch of additional ranks to basic skills, the chance to stun, cooldown, and attack speed, but the power is where it lies. So damaging enemies with non-basic skills marks them. We don't care about that, okay? We're not using a non-basic. I mean, we are, but if we damage them, it would be with Caltrops or like Smoke Grenade. So like when we do these, we're going to get that, but we don't necessarily care about that, okay? Uh, when a basic skill first hits a marked enemy, the basic skill's damage is echoed to all marked enemies, dealing the 190% multiplicative increased damage. So when we pop any of these dash when we pop death trap when we pop shadow step we're going to get the mark and then we are going to when we hit them all heart seeker this is where it's going to echo and explode and that's where we're going to get the big burst of damage that you saw against durial so pain gorgers is now our new victimized so just so everybody like understands how that works so you need to have the highest power that you can for pain gorgers i only got a 190 so i need to get a 200 and more importantly try to get a ga on the basic skills so this is where our huge damage come from which is pain gorgers which you know it's great you know that's why we had to take the helmet here for the extra lucky hit because otherwise we would try to run uh uh fist of fate here but you have to have pain gorgers for this build to work next in our pants we got umbris on the lucky hit the crits that's how we get our free um uh dark shrouds which is why you also don't see that on the skill bar um, try to get GA Heartseeker like I have here and don't mess up on the second roll. You want all crits on Heartseeker, so I got to do a lot of re-rolling on these. Uh, then Pennant Greaves. Now, this is the one where I've been back and forth about Pennant Greaves. So there's a few things here. Um, the biggest thing here is that you get the chill potency, the chill slow potency, which helps slow down enemies. And then you deal increased damage to chilled enemies. So it's just a multiplicative because we our entire build is cold imbued. So we're dealing even more damage here. However, if you don't want to run Pen of Greaves, then that's fine. You could run normal boots and just do like Concussive Strike. But Pen of Greaves really shines here because you get that extra multiplicative damage and we want as much damage as possible. So, and it's really cool that we have a spot now that really uses Pen of Greaves because we rarely ever use this item. So it's cool that we have a build now that will work. Um, in our bow, we got Moonrise here. You want to get as the, a higher crit chance or a higher roll on the Heartseeker projectiles to be cast twice. Um, I've only kept this one at level four because it's the lowest roll, so I'm trying to find another bow to redo it. But you want to crit. If you get a like pretty high roll on the projectiles and then you crit once, when you level it to 12, you'll be at 100%, which is perfectly fine. Otherwise, like I, if I kept this bow, I'd have to crit two times just to get to 100%. So I'm looking for a better bow. So I need a GA uh, dexterity bow. Um, I also need to re-roll the damage percent on there to just um, vulnerable damage. But yeah, so right now, this is just a temporary bow, but you want Moonrise here. Damaging an enemy gives us attack speed and more damage, which is fantastic. Next, we got Conceited here, all right? You deal increased damage while you have a barrier, but it's like, wait, how do we get a barrier again? Rogues don't have barriers. Well, when you come down here, right, second wind, every 100 energy you spend gives you a barrier for three seconds. So how do we, how do we spend resource or our energy in a basic attack build well that's where this shard of the this sword comes in and basic skills deal 185 percent multiplicative damage but they additionally cost 25 primary resource so four shots of heart seeker triggers and gives us our barrier which triggers our conceited so we do a lot of damage so this new sword fantastic gives us crazy attack speed uh, more basic skills um, the only bummer is that, you know, it costs. So we don't really have a high level of energy. We got 113. But still, um, with Starless Skies, which reduces our cost, and with, you know, the chance to our intervention to give us back energy, we have no problem spamming in this build. So we got Starless Skies. You guys all know how that one works. Very, very good. And then we got Cold Clip. This is how all of our skills are imbued with Cold Imbuement. Your basic skills are always Cold Imbued. So with, even without having it on our bar... 
we, our our heart seeker is always cold imbued and then we deal 20 percent multiplicative increased damage to enemies who are chilled and frozen which is all the time and then last but not least is our amulet with adaptability when you cast uh, below 50 percent, your basic skills generate but when you cast above your basic skills deal increased multiplicative damage which is fantastic so on our amulet this is where things get crazy I have attack speed, exploit, and frigid finesse. You want frigid finesse, and then you want either weapon master or malice. Malice is the preferred choice, and then weapon master after that, and then you could do exploit. Okay, I rolled and got exploit at a plus two, so I just kept it. I got the double crit on it, which is great. So if I go back to re-roll this, if I can get a weapon master or a malice, I'm taking that no matter what. But frigid finesse, and one of those first two you have to have but exploit will work just fine. Um, ideally, you would want Frigid Finesse, Weapon Master, and Malice, all three on your amulet. I know that's like pretty much impossible to get, but if you can't get, get something exactly like I have here with Attack Speed, Exploit, and Frigid Finesse, something similar, and then of course, get the damage to Dark Shroud and all that good stuff, and then the build is absolutely insane. Next, let's go into the Paragon board here. Very, very simple. And four, we changed a few things because of last season. Uh, so we have Ambush for even more damage, right, from our traps. Candy for even more damage, Multiplicative. Then we got Chip for even more damage, okay, physical. And then we got Control for way more damage to chilled and frozen enemies. And then we got Fluidity for even more damage and increased energy regeneration, which is great. Five again, as usual. Now we're coming up. We are taking No Witness for even more damage. Uh, we are taking Deadly Ambush for more damage. And we're taking exploit weakness for even more damage. And then we have cheap shot for even more damage. However, we are not taking Eldritch Bounty. Okay, this, this is like not working. Um, apparently, this is not working at the moment. So we're not taking this. Because um, the 20% increased damage for that imbuement element for, for 9 seconds is crazy good. But I, apparently, this is bugged and not working. Which is why it's not in the board at the moment. So once that all changes, then we'll be good to go. But for now, this is just how we're going to have to do the build. And that's just, you know, we're stuck right now, guys, until it gets fixed. But otherwise, this build is absolutely insane. I'm so happy that Heartseeker is back. The build is nuts, guys. Like the video. Let's get this over to 100 likes. Easy. Let's get it going. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Again, big shout out to Dioxide. And thank you again, Dioxide, for talking with me last night during your live stream. So go shout out to Dioxide. All his links are down in the description below. And yeah, guys, subscribe if you're new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.